Hi, Greg Perry, the historic preservationist uh, on site here in the, the conservation workshop. Uh, just gonna talk just a bit about this, uh, this uh, monumental piece here that's uh, come into the shop. Um, so number one, it's Dutch. So made in Amsterdam. And this is made in the, probably the third quarter of the 18th century. But just so we want to know, this is a copy of a piece that would have been made around 1700 or 1690. So there was a revival of these type of pieces in the, um, in the late portion of the 18th century of the late 17th century objects. So, so how do we tell that? Okay, so this, <laughs> this piece is covered in seaweed marquetry. And uh, if we come closer here, you can see that some of the seaweed marquetry we've looked at on videos in the past um, is not is much more detailed than this. So there's a lot, there's no engraving uh, in a lot of this. So it's showing that this was a more of a, and I don't want to say it's mass produced, but it was to give the, the illusion of that piece from the late 17th century. It was meant to give the illusion of, so there wasn't as much time put into it. So these pieces were, for the time period, they were somewhat production pieces. So they were moving in the shops and out of the shops very quickly. Remember the trades were broken down segmented into uh, joiner shops, uh, builder builders, uh, people that just uh, cut timber, uh, sawyers, people that just did marquetry. So these were all segmented by this time, the late 18th century. <coughs> Somewhat similar in the early 18th century, but they tended to put more time in the marquetry, more detail. So that's one of the things. But other than that, it's, it's a great rendition, a great copy from the carvings of the Harry Paul feet, which were showing some loss at the bottom, up to the, uh, you know, the broken, uh, the broken cartouche, which uh, I have a piece of that, but there's gonna have to be some added. So, uh, so some wonderful stuff. So, um, you know, we're just gonna take a look. So this, the seaweed marquetry was one of the most intricate marquetries uh, of four or five different styles in the 18th century done. So the seaweed by far, and just, a, just, just going to do a skim here today. Um, this substrate under, this is the flapper, the lid, the substrate was done with molding planes. And uh, it was shaped and formed and shaped and formed. And the piece of marquetry was done, the piece of here we just saw, just moving around. So the piece of marquetry was done on a, the piece of marquetry was done on a bench, this entire piece. Then it was wetted and it was formed. It was bent over something. So it was pressed on to this flap that had been molded planed or had been shaped. Then it was pressed on there with high glue and, and, and heat um, and a lot of pressure. So that was pressed on. And the same thing with the doors. The panels were made, the substrate panels, the marquetry was done, it was pressed. But obviously these are the more difficult um, you know, places or, or objectives around the, you know, the surmount of this piece, the drawer fronts, the base, the, uh, the, the sides going down. And down here we can see some loss. And we have loss here, a little bit of loss, but you can see. So where you have some very crazy vectors of movement in the substrate of the wood, that's where the, the glue tends to fail, relieve itself, where the marquetry is adhered to. But uh, nevertheless, it's absolutely a masterpiece. And I'm not sure, I don't think it's for everyone. I think these type of pieces are just too huge. They're out of proportion. But as far as building go, they're a masterpiece. And again, I just, just touching there, this piece, of, uh, this piece of Kingwood veneer broke off. And that's going to have to be, you know, just taped back on temporarily where it's going to sit. Because we don't want to have to re recreate that. Because finding the original style and the age of the wood is going to be nearly impossible. So... And this piece came with a lot of extra pieces. So um, we're going to look into the brasses to see. We have Napoleon here, you know, on the, the sliding escutcheon, Napoleon. And we have some other figureheads down here, and that could be Napoleon, the side profile. Um, these could be later upgrades. I'm going to pull these off. In fact, they would have to be from the time frame that I'm telling you we think the piece was made. Uh, but again, this could this could reverse and be another indicator when this piece was made. Nothing is ever set in stone. You pull all the evidence together. You're an investigator here, and then you try to determine the time of build. 
but we have some idiot. We always have idiots dealing with these pieces, untrained idiots. And look at this. We have a nice metal shelf support in there, and they put some cloth in the back. I guess they didn't like to look at the old wood back there. It's very obtrusive to them. So, so obviously, there's, there's more damage there. Um, so we have to undo a few things. But if that's all we have to undo, it's not a lot of issue here. So, But uh, let's take a, take a look at the, the door here. So on the back of the door, you have this beautiful inlay. And uh, this is a king wood, so it's beautiful on both sides. But I mean, it's not doesn't match the uh, the marquetry buildup. Original lock, mortise and tenon uh, frames on the hinges, and look at this work. Look at this phenomenal bent work here on this piece of molding coming up. Just absolutely phenomenal. So, so these things have to be handled quite delicately. So let's take a look on the inside. So here's your lopers. You pull, always pull your lopers out and always repairing stuff from people that uh, don't deal with the lopers. Let's put this piece of marquetry up here so we don't lose it. So the lopers are your lid support. And obviously the, the, the width, breadth, and the weight of this piece is causes it to rack. So if anybody wants to move this piece, set it down. The flap doesn't work, the drawers don't work. Try and shim and get the superstructure to move just an iota this way or that way, crossing either the diagonals of its landing pattern on its feet. So carefully open the, the flap or the lid, or the original lock. And uh, we have this beautiful inlay to mimic the inlay behind the doors. It picks up the inlay on the side of the drawers here. So we have a beautiful fitted interior. So here, these are open pigeonholes. Uh, we have some loss on some of the veneers. Let's take a look at some of the drawers. So, massive. And this is this is reminiscent of not being a total period piece, I believe. Um, these dovetails are nice, but they're huge. And uh, inside we have English quartered oak. Beautiful oak, so we know uh, most of that oak came from England, even though these guys were made in, in Holland or Amsterdam. And here's our document drawers. These are our, part of our secret drawer affair. Okay, you would have put documents and cash and just take a look at the dovetails putting this box together here. So, very nice. You know, not everybody created all these very fine dovetails like the English. The English and the French. I would say the English have it on the French, which is the, the tiniest, the most radical angled of the dovetails. And here you have two separate, uh, two separate secret compartments. Right here, again, cash and some other things. I'm sure when the, when the crooks, as we have a lot of crooks around today, um, going around your property, that they would have uh, found this type of thing. This one's being a bit bound up, but uh, gonna have some work done. And then you have the prospect door, which is the center prospect door, the center door. Um, don't know what this stuff is. We'll have to experience that. I don't know what that is. Uh, but anyway, so you have just some compartments in here. Uh, looking at here for the first time, nothing secret, just three three drawers to put some stuff into. And surprisingly enough, it does, doesn't even have a lock, typically, these prospect doors, because, again, it was a place to store stuff, documents and such. But this is a secret compartment here in the top. So you could hide a lot of interesting things in here. Again, haven't been able to get totally inside to explore it, what, if anything, is in here. But uh, the secret floor slides back. So I guess it's not so secret if you have a knob there. In the past, um, on more English oriented pieces, uh, it's just for the pressure of the hand going back will be the opening. So um, we have our candle slides. This is for illumination. Um, and we'll have to do a video sometime at night, bring some candles out. Let's take a look at how this looks. And that is the, but just take a look at the massive sides. This piece needs massive sides here, you know. It's tapering out to about an inch, inch and an eighth. I know that's part of the molding, but it needs just a, a, a very large superstructure to hold this guy together. And uh, we'll take a look at one of the drawers. Oh, some lovely, some lovely marbled paper. I mean, boy, I wonder if it can be original in the 18th century. You know, people didn't want to see the drawers. They made it, didn't want their their cashmere sweaters to catch, so they put this down on the bottom, sure. And uh, typically in a Dutch fashion that the drawer is uh, sliding on a runner here.
you know, and that's a good thing for this type of uh, carcass work because again, it's so big, it racks so easily. So it's much better than, it just, it's a really good guide for it. And then taking a look down here at the foot, there is a little bit of loss and it's, it's a very underdeveloped uh, Harry Paul style foot. So it's not, not on the top of the list, but uh, uh, let's come up to the top here. Let's see how this door wants to react. The other door has come off. And I'm going to hold on to it, but just take a look at the lovely molding work. And that's all hand carved, the substrate. And then the marquetry is made, and then the marquetry again. The marquetry is steam bent and then pressed on there. So uh, just masterful, masterful work. So, And then we have you know, three or four secret drawers. Not, I mean, we'll call them secret drawers, but in the top here. Again, marbleized paper, which has to go. And we're going to take a look at the validity of these shelves. They don't look original. These shelves should be... Uh, a bit more coarse in a piece like this, but uh, we will check that out. So, And again, the broken cartouche on the top, but all of this marquetry work was done on the Chavalet. Uh, you have beautiful vase here, and we have a couple birds, maybe ho-ho birds, I don't know, but a vase, and then, uh, you know, the birds are all throughout. So just uh, playing a bit over here, and uh, let me just grab some, some alcohol. So I was just playing here um, earlier, just to see what this is going to come up, back up when it's, uh, um, just take a look at that. That's how beautiful it's going to be. This is natural wood. There was no stain on this. So just cutting back the finish, so to speak, on there. It's going to be lighter. And, and if you look at the ground, the ground in here is a king wood ground. We have light sections and we have dark sections. We have light sections and dark sections. So it's strewn throughout here. Light, 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 dark, dark, dark. So it's giving you this three-dimensional depth. So the artist who made this was thinking about the depth, not only of the inset seaweed marquetry, but also, and hopefully everybody can see this. It looks like seaweed. If you've been on a beach, green, heavy, thick seaweed on the, on the Pacific, upper Pacific coast, it does look like this. I mean, it's a lot thicker, but... Anyway, but you're going to see how beautiful this is going to come up. And what we're seeing here is how the inside looks, how the inside fared this, this wood. It's the same wood, but it fared uh, much differently because it has been exposed to all the light as the outside. But this is not all light. This is change and finish. This is a darkening and finish. This is environmental factors, environmental interior pollution, pollution maybe from a wood, uh, a wood fireplace or any other environmental contaminants mixed with the finish causes this finish to go dark. And here is the result. A lot of pieces we find are bleached because of sunlight. These kind of pieces come in and it's the finish and the pollution that is dark in the interior. So we're going to do a sympathetic restoration on this. It's not going to be a, a cutback subsurface like the French like to do. The French like to go below the surface and, and, and at times uh, really cut into the wood. We're going to do more of a somewhere between a French restoration conservation and a British um, certainly like the American. The American conservation is just to muddy something up and it's tell everybody it's, they don't know the origin, so it's uh, crazy. So we want to see this the way it looked like when it came out of the, the master artisans who put this together the day it was new. That's what we want to do without biting in subsurface of the wood. So, so anyway, that's it. So uh, we have a real masterpiece here, a real, real challenge. We're going to keep you updated on everything that's happening with it. So Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist, signing out.